the Pokemon world is filled with many fantastical creatures. From the vast lands, to the depths of the seas, and the limitless skies, it truly is an amazing world. However, there's another amazing world with creatures just as fantastic. Your world. The planet is filled with amazing creatures that have unique and impressive abilities. My name is Ranger Rai, and I'm here to help bridge the gap between the Pokemon world and your world. So please, join me as we go through my Ranger Logs and we talk about Pokemon and their real-world inspirations. Fire is a powerful force of nature. However, with the extreme heat, we often receive refreshed soil and new growth. Fire has also been a means of warmth and light for many creatures for centuries. Much like a raging fire, the topic of today's discussion has not only the power of heat, but the chaotic attitude of a blazing inferno. The Typhlosion Line. Before we move on, it would be a huge help if you considered liking and sharing this video, as well as subscribing to my channel. This helps my channel grow, so I can continue to bring you guys more amazing videos like this. We're approaching 500 subscribers, and I have a really nice video planned for this milestone, which I'm sure you guys will love. All it takes is one subscription. Also, be sure to stay till the end of the video for a very special announcement. But for now, let's get back to my Ranger Logs. Now, the Typhlosion line has tons of influences in each stage of its growth, some of which are much more surprising than you may realize. Starting off at the first stage of the Typhlosion line, we have Cyndaquil. Its influences come from multiple places, but their physical appearance is inspired mostly by the Echidna, which some people have often described as the Lesser Hedgehog. However, that couldn't be further from the truth. Their quills are longer and sharper, and they have bigger claws and knuckles. The Echidna isn't the only influence for Cyndaquil, however. Take a bit of Shrew, a touch of Anteater, and a pinch of Tenric, and ta-da! You have a Gen 2 Fire-type starter. Now, instead of going over each and every animal influence, I'll quickly go over the most notable aspects of each species. Now, the Anteater only seems to have inspired Cyndaquil's body shape, as we can tell by its long snout and the curve of its body. Though, it may be worth noting that the other animals have long snouts as well. The Anteater is also far larger than the other animals, even including Cyndaquil itself. Now, as we look at some more specific influences, I'd like to bring to attention an interesting detail. Have you ever noticed how Cyndaquil's eyes are squinty? It's a bit of an odd trait shared by no other starters other than Froki, and I do have a theory about this. However, these eyes might be due to two major factors, the first of which being the Shrew and the Tenric. Shrews can actually use the echolocation skill, which means they can detect their surroundings through high-frequency sounds. This is essential for both the Shrew and the Temric, as they both have poor eyesight. The Temric has adapted by becoming nocturnal, but I don't believe a Cyndaquil would benefit too much from this. The second factor for these eyes might simply be that, well, Cyndaquil's a baby. Most mammals can't completely open their eyes when they're first born, usually requiring about two to eight weeks before they can. As for the quill part of its name, Cyndaquil is largely based on the Echidna, whose quills are much larger than a hedgehog's. All things considered, a Cyndaquil still needs to learn many defensive moves to survive, especially the move known as Defense Curl. Due to the positioning of its fire spots, Cyndaquil needs to curl its head close into its body before it can erupt into flames. This is almost identical to an Echidna defending itself from a larger predator. There is one very important detail I needed to discuss, and that's why a Cyndaquil is a fire type. In my research, I discovered that Echidnas can actually lower their body's metabolism and hide itself underground during a forest fire, putting itself into a hibernation-like state and allowing it to breathe through fire. It's honestly amazing. Now, when Cyndaquil evolves into Quilava, many things change and many things don't. When Cyndaquil evolves, the resulting Quilava will finally expose those bright red peepers, along with the longer body and even more flames. The influences for this stage, especially the Quills of Fire, are based on the Crested Porcupine, specifically the locations on the head and the back. In fact, the Crested Porcupine's Quills are almost the exact same fiery explosion-like shape. While the Quills are exceptionally similar, Quilava's body is derived from the Weasel family, namely the Stoat, the way its body colors are split in two is an exact parallel of real-world stoats. In fact, the shiny forms of Quilava and its other evolutions reflect this even more. 
Now, Quilava doesn't have the same curved body shape as its previous form, so it no longer curls into a ball like before. Instead, it relies on the greater range of its newly grown body and its vastly improved agility. You may wonder why it even has spikes if curling up isn't even much of an option anymore. Well, while it still has access to moves like Flame Wheel, these quills are a useful defensive tool in the event that a larger opponent gets a hold of Quilava by the neck or anywhere along its long back. In order to protect its long back area, Quilava learns a variety of powerful fire type moves, such as Eruption and Lava Plume, which can provide a perfect escape or an overwhelming move against a larger opponent. Of course, once Quilava evolves into Typhlosion, it rarely needs to worry about escaping, as it becomes an absolute powerhouse, tripling in size from its first form, and drawing inspiration from much larger predators. Both Typhlosion and Quilava both share similar traits to Weasels, so many aspects will naturally carry over. However, I haven't mentioned one animal that inspires both, the Badger. While Quilava does possess some of the Badger's traits, Typhlosion possesses more. Weasels, Badgers, and Bears inspire this volcanic Pokemon. A very appropriate title. I've already discussed the strengths of Weasels, and I don't think the power of Bears warrants much explanation. But I will note that they largely inspire Typhlosion's size. The Honey Badger has a more specific influence when it comes to its size, its close link to Weasels, and two of its special traits. Before I explain these traits, we must address one major behavioral aspect of the Honey Badger. Though these creatures may appear small and even cute, they are actually an extremely aggressive and dangerous breed of animal. They have been known to challenge animals much bigger than themselves, such as lions, and in some cases, they even win. With all this information, you may wonder, well, how does this transfer to a Pokemon? Quite perfectly, actually. Typhlosion has been described as having such a powerful rage that anything it touches will burst into flames. This may be an exaggeration, but this Pokemon does possess an extreme aggression, and is always ready for a fight, just like its real-world counterpart. What about those two traits I mentioned earlier? Well, those would be the fiery quills on its neck and its claws. I'll start with the obvious one, the quills. While they're still heavily influenced by porcupines, you may notice that they're now only on Typhlosion's neck. That's because this fiery neck coverage is yet another trait of the Honey Badger. A Honey Badger has a thick layer of skin around its neck and back area, which provides protection against larger predators. The thickness of the skin is comparable to that of a yoga mat, and it's able to resist bites, scratches, and in rare cases, machete cuts. Aside from the neck protection, Typhlosion also has powerful claws which allow it to use immensely powerful moves, such as Focus Punch, Fire Punch, and the famous Thunder Punch. These moves, along with some ground-type moves, are reminiscent of Honey Badgers and their powerful claws and digging abilities. Honey Badgers have claws that are strong enough to burrow at an incredibly fast pace. Their razor-sharp claws are a big part of their aggressive kit for survival, which explains why it would learn so many punch-type moves. Honey Badgers have also been known to have a growling, snarling cry that intimidates most predators, very similar to Typhlosion and its roaring, snarling cry. Take a listen. It's honestly amazing. You won't usually find a wild Typhlosion, and you probably wouldn't want to, because Honey Badger inspired Pokemon don't care. It just goes to show how closely the Pokemon world and the real world can overlap, and can provide some great education on the animal kingdom. I hope you all enjoyed this video, and if you did, please consider liking and sharing it, as well as subscribing to my channel. It helps me grow so I can continue to bring you all more content like this. Also, it's time for my big announcement. As of this video, I am just under 200 subscribers, and I mentioned earlier that I have a very special video planned. However, I want to do something very special for 250 subscribers as well. Without giving too much away, I'll be starting a new video series to accompany my ranger logs, and I'm sure that you all will love it. All I need is your help. If you haven't subscribed, I would greatly appreciate you doing so. Share this video with your friends, your family, mailman, or anyone who really loves Pokemon. There's so many amazing things to learn about our world, and I want to make sure you get to experience them all. Thanks again, and remember to keep exploring, trainers.